Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to present the highlight of our paper titled Utilizing Text Mining on Online Medical Forums to Predict Label Change uh, Due to Adverse Drug Reactions. And this paper is based on my uh, master's thesis uh, under the supervision of Professor Ronan Feldman. So I'll commence by outlining three facts that uh, motivate uh, our study. Um, the first point is that adverse drug events comprise the fourth leading cause of death in the US. Um, second fact is that clinical trials are often limited uh, both in number of participants and, and scope. And as a result, they fail to indicate all ADRs of a drug that's about to come to market. And this, um, as indicated in my third point, later leads to label changes in which new ADRs are, um, of a drug are appended to the list of, of uh, ADRs after the drug's release. So therefore, our goal was to come up with a text mining methodology that will enable us to detect unreported ADRs. And in our design, we had two criteria in mind. We wanted the methodology to be reliable, yet uh, unlaborious. That is, um, we wanted to bring manual work to minimum yet to still maintain a high precision rate. So uh, several studies have taken um, a descriptive approach uh, in which one extracts uh, drug ADR relations for each drug and compares them to uh, ADRs that's, that are uh, formally reported uh, on the drug label. Um, however, uh, when taking this approach, um, it is not always clear uh, whether the mention of a drug ADR relation um, is simply a reflection of the known medical relation between the two. And so we decided to uh, subject our approach to a predictive test. That is, we empirically demonstrate how our system can predict ADRs uh, prior to their um, uh, reporting by the FDA. Um, and since we cannot, um, sorry, since we cannot uh, prove our predictions um, on, on, on future ADRs, not until um, the future becomes the present, that is, um, we actually emulated our uh, crystal ball future um, seeing powers in the following way. We detected um, ADRs that are reported by the FDA by looking into online messages published prior to the first announcement. And as we shall see, um, our method manages to uh, find these ADRs sometimes years prior to the first announcement. So our framework um, for mining the drug ADR relations was a domain independent uh, system for relation extraction, um, focusing on natural language sentences. And the framework employs uh, purely unsupervised methods as the relation extraction system trains itself to extract the target relations. <coughs> Um, this URE framework, this uh, unsupervised relation extraction framework, uh, utilizes a grammar that is a generic HPSG-based English grammar. And as far as the lexicon goes, it was a lean lexicon that initially consisted uh, of full definitions just for frequent and functional words. Um, however, upon acquiring new uh, relation patterns, the framework could augment the lexicon, which is related in our case to the medical domain.
So our methodology consists of or involve uh, four steps, um, pre-processing, relation pattern acquisition, extraction, and finally post-processing. And I will now briefly outline each of them. In our pre-processing step, we first downloaded um, hundreds uh, of thousands of relevant web pages from uh, four popular medical forums. We then parsed those structured pages in order to extract the metadata as well as the data itself. And we then broke each text segment uh, into sentences and of course, we got rid of uh, duplicate messages so that they wouldn't bias our analysis. Then, we used our text mining framework on a sample of the data in order to learn and acquire the drug ADR relation patterns. And those patterns could be such that relate the following entities to each other, uh, person, drug, symptoms, and disease, and we then manually went over the acquired relations and removed irrelevant uh, ones. And this basically was the only manual task that we performed during uh, this uh, relation pattern acquisition step. So we then let our uh, framework run on our entire input and extract entities as well as relations. Um, however, with respect to extracting uh, direct drug ADR relations, meaning drug symptom uh, relations, the framework itself unfortunately achieved relatively low recall. Um, so, therefore, we added a post-processing step, which applied a new algorithm uh, that could catch the less um, straightforward and more elusive uh, relations. So, although we essentially are interested in drug symptom relations, we also extract um, other combinations we refer to as partial relations such as person drug um, or person symptom. And that way, for example, uh, in this sentence, I, I took Lipitor and suffer muscle weakness and memory loss, um, we can merge two partial relations, person take drug and person suffer symptom into a drug symptom relation. And as far as validating the outcomes of our approach to predict drug ADR um, relations, we use the LIFT metric, um, also known as pointwise mutual information. And we used it to evaluate the likelihood of a particular drug ADR uh, relation to occur uh, over and beyond chance. So um, actually the lift metric is open for interpretation as uh, with respect to the definition of the population of messages to be included um, in the denominator of the lift uh, probability. And so in our process, uh, we applied two different measures of lift. Um, and we then employed um, the chi-square test for independence to evaluate the significance of each lift measure. Okay. Um, our first case study was for statins. Uh, this is a class of cholesterol-lowering drugs uh, for which the FDA approved a label change in the beginning of uh, 2012 for cognitive impairment symptoms such as memory loss. And this table um, displays the extracted drug ADRs uh, of the six classes of drugs in the cholesterol lowering domain uh, from 1999 to 2011 
which is one year prior to the FDA's announcement. And as is marked very clearly in the table, there are numerous extractions of statins and cognitive impairment. Uh, statins is represented by uh, class six in this table. And by the way, all statins ADRs uh, with more frequent mentions uh, than cognitive impairment, um, apart from uh, heart attack, are known ADRs. So, um, as I mentioned, we first tried to detect drug ADR um, with lift value that is above one. Uh, these are the green cells in the tables. And however, this is just a necessary condition. And so for those, we also apply the chi-square uh, test. And we can see that uh, for the first type of lift, we measure uh, 1.2 lift and 13.3 uh, chi-square value, which is way above the 6.64 um, pivotal value, corresponding a 1% p-value. And as for the other type of lift, we measure a 2.0 lift and a 49.3 chi-square value. So when calculating the lift and chi-square values, one can see that uh, cognitive impairment is an extremely significant ADR with respect to statins. And lastly, what you can also see in this table is that this ADR, cognitive impairment, um, is not at all significant with respect to the other five classes of drugs. Um, what's more, um, even if we look at earlier years, we can see that our approach detected a significant relationship between silence and cognitive um, impairment between seven to nine years prior to the FDA label change. And I said seven to nine, uh, that is depending on the um, lift metric. The second case study um, was with uh, Welbutrin, which is a drug used by people with depression uh, and for which the FDA required adding a warning box in mid-2009 to highlight um, the risk of agitation. So this table displays uh, the extracted drug ADRs of the six popular drugs in the anti-depression domain. Uh, once again, from 1999 to uh, one year prior to the FDA's announcement. And this table clearly shows that as far as um, ADR extractions for Welbutrin goes, uh, agitation is one of the most common ones. Um, here we can see that we measure our 1.7 and 1.8 lift values and respective 29.5 and 28.8 chi-square values that are much greater than the 6.64 uh, pivotal value. So we get that agitation is a significant uh, ADR with respect to Welbutrin by both measures of lift. Uh, once again, uh, when looking backwards, we can see that we were able to detect the relationship between uh, Welbutrin and agitation as early as seven years uh, prior to the label change. Um, obviously, our results so far um, are only as good as our ability to mine the drug ADR relations. Um, if our, if our um, extractions are actually not reliable, then it will uh, pull the rug from under uh, our analysis. So this table here shows the quality of our text mining methodology. And as we can see, uh, precision rates on our test set are indeed high. So to sum up, we presented a methodology that is both uh, reliable and unlaborious. 
And by utilizing this uh, methodology, we demonstrated a strong and significant relationship between statins and cognitive impairment that is identified as early as nine years uh, prior to the FDA label change. And similarly, we found a significant relationship this time between Wellbutrin and agitation that was identified as early as seven years prior to the FDA label change. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have time for a few quick questions. Uh, I had one myself. Uh, with these, did you uh, consider uh, cost of doing the label change when you were looking at your precision numbers and false positives? Could you repeat that? Uh, did you make any consideration for, say, the cost of doing a label change uh, in the face of false positives? What do you mean by cost? So, yes. I mean, well, uh, cost to the drug company for doing a label change when they should not have. Um, we didn't um, look at the label change in with the, from the standpoint of the drug companies. We just tried to mine, um, you know, the drug ADR relations from the medical forums. Um, it wasn't under our consideration to, to okay. consider that. Uh, this is maybe a more of a clarification question. So yeah. uh, you have the you have listed out there that you your study actually identified uh, not just the ones that the side effects that's confirmed uh, by FDA studies uh, afterwards, but you also actually has some other side effects that you identified, right? right? And then uh, and then are these all like the ones that are significant based on your methodology? Like uh, if you go back to your chart, uh, yeah. you actually has listed a, bun a bunch, right? Like over here, right? So. Yeah. yeah, just stay here. So anxiety, right? So like, you know, there are a lot of them that you, you did this top extracted ADRs. And, and like, were they also um, significant? Uh, well, you, we're just it, not de confirmed. it depends. You, the, I can go forward, hmm, wait, to the other table, and then you can see which, which of them is significant. Uh, but you just keep okay, in so, mind so that this table is, all, is uh, only from 1999 to one year prior to the uh, um, announcement regarding the agitation. agitation right. right. Yeah, so that's my question is that you actually have identified a lot of them that are significant under your study, but n like only agitation was actually confirmed by FDA. Um, is that true? Well, we didn't look at the already known ADRs because we were interested in the unknown ADRs. Um, some okay. of them, you can see that um, some of the already known ADRs are, all, are, are also um, um, uh, significant. So, um, so to speak, our methodology can uh, detect them as well. But um, um, it's really um, uh, it's a it's a bit complicated because uh, once uh, an ADR is already known, then it's a question. Um, it's not clear whether people will still uh, discuss it uh, on, on medical forums if, if, if everyone, if everyone right. knows about it. I see, so. I see. But I think it'll be good confirmation to identify the ones that you identify as significant, but it actually haven't been discovered uh, mm -hmm. by FDA. Thank you. Okay, and let's, let's 